With the release of Joker Folly Ado, I thought it would be fun to take a look back at all the film versions of the Joker and rank their costumes from my least favourite to my favourite. Hello and welcome to Cinemates, and if you're new here, be sure to subscribe to see more videos like this. As always, with my rankings, I first need to set out the criteria for what I'm going to be including in the ranking. Firstly, this is only going to be including Joker costumes from theatrical films. So none of the Joker stuff from Gotham, not the Joker cameo in the Birds of Prey series, or the obscure Joker appearances in Titans or in the Batwoman series. And I'm only going to be including live action films, so nothing animated, no Joker in Mask of the Phantasm or Lego Batman. Also, the Joker is a character who wears many costumes, so I'm only really going to include each of the Joker's main looks for each film they appear in and not include every minor costume the Joker wears, but I may touch on them if they're relevant. And of course, this is my opinion on the costumes themselves, considering their comic connections, their relevance in the story or to the character, which is super important with the Joker, as quite often his story is so deeply tied to the way he looks. And considering, most importantly, their design as a whole. Does it look cool? Is it an effective design? And does it feel like the Joker? This is not a video ranking the characters, the films, or the actors, just the look of the Joker in each movie. So with that out the way, let's get right into the ranking. Number seven, Jared Leto's Joker from Suicide Squad. To no one's surprise, coming in last place is Jared Leto's Joker from Suicide Squad. From the moment this design was revealed, we knew it wasn't the one. It feels like a design that doesn't quite get what makes the Joker interesting, and it's trying to be edgy, but just fails. The look of the Joker is usually mysterious, while giving us some hint into his backstory, whether that's bleach by acid, a Glasgow smile, or just a man in makeup. Our imagination can fill in the gaps about what we can learn about each version of the Joker. Well, Leto's design, isn't so subtle and it spells it out for us. I mean, it literally spells it out for us with tattoos. The Joker is famous for having a smile. This guy has not one, not two, but three smiles tattooed on him. And the Joker has a famous laugh. So it says ha 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 multiple times over his body. The Joker is crazy in the head. So it literally says damaged on his forehead. And in case you didn't realize it, because this character doesn't look like the Joker, it literally says Joker in massive letters on his stomach. Doesn't look good. And it takes any subtlety or nuance away from the character. A tattoo that works best, I think, is the J on his cheek. Sure, Jay could mean Joker, but it could also mean Jason Todd, aka the Robin that was killed by the Joker. And this tattoo is similar to teardrop tattoos that some gang members get after they kill someone. So I think for a version of the Joker that is more influenced by gang culture, this could work. It doesn't explicitly say it, but it implies some history with Robin, which is interesting. But it doesn't have the impact that it could have because he's covered in dozens of other tattoos that take that attention away. And just to beat you over the head with it, because this Joker has no subtlety, he also has a dead Robin tattooed on his arm, which completely ruins any mystery or intrigue. Sure, in All-Star Batman, we do see a Joker with a massive dragon tattoo, but this isn't in the main continuity. And other than that, there isn't really a history of Joker having tattoos in the comics. If you remove the tattoos, the design is fine. He also has a grill. A lot of people don't like the grill. I don't mind it. I like the idea that Batman has punched this guy's teeth out so many times that he now has fake teeth. And that's kind of this Joker's take on the Joker smile. I don't mind the slick back hair either. There is comic precedence to this look, especially with the new 52 and some of the modern comics. We don't really see this version in the classic purple suit. I think the closest we get is a purple trench coat but we do see a few other comic references with his outfit but when i see them it just makes me wish we had a more comic accurate version of the joker because it's like he's wearing the outfits but other than that he doesn't look or feel like the joker there's a simplicity to the effectiveness of the joker's comic design which usually hits one of two things genuinely creepy or more clown like and it isn't overtly creepy but it gives you that uneasy feeling that clowns can have this version hits neither of those and it isn't scary or intimidating in any way overall it just feels like a design trying so hard to be different it fails at actually doing anything interesting that works for the Joker. Number six, Barry Keoghan's Joker from The Batman. Next up is the Joker who makes a brief appearance in The Batman. Now in the main cut of the film, we don't really get a good look at him, but there is a deleted scene where we get a clearer look at him. And so I thought it'd be fun to include that in this list. I actually really like the deleted scene. I think it tells us a lot about both Batman and the Joker and their relationship together. And I kind of wish they didn't cut it because I think it's very effective. And even in this scene, we don't get a clear look at him, but it's that mystery and intrigue that makes it so interesting, especially compared with Leto's Joker, which spelled everything out explicitly. Now, this is definitely the most gruesome look for the Joker. It's unnerving to look at. He has a permanent crooked smile. His skin looks rough and scarred. His hair looks patchy and his hands are stained with dried blood. My initial interpretation of this that is trying to capture the look for someone who genuinely fell in acid. Traditionally, the Joker falls in acid and it bleaches his skin and hair. But I took this look as the Joker falling into acid and becoming disfigured. It's burned his skin and mouth. It's made his hair fall out and it's left him covered in blood. And I thought that's an interesting interpretation for a Gotham that is more grounded. And there's the idea in the comics that the Joker saw his reflection which then drove him crazy and with an appearance disfigured like this you can see what 
why he might go crazy and how he would feel like his normal life was over. While I do prefer more comic accurateness and I'm tiring of this extreme realistic take on Batman, I can appreciate this idea, especially if Batman felt somewhat responsible for his disfigurement. However, apparently this is not the case and in an interview with the director, he revealed that this is not the result of falling in acid, but actually a congenital disease. I wanted to create an iteration of him that felt distinctive and new, but went right back to the roots. So he, he's kind of very much out of the Conrad Veidt sort of mold. And that idea of the silent film of the man who laughs, he's got this congenital disease, he can never stop smiling. And I was like, well, maybe there's something here where he, it's not something where he fell in a vat of chemicals or it's not the Nolan thing where he has these scars and we don't know where they came from. What if this is something that he's been touched on, that he's been touched by from birth? and that he has a kind of congenital disease that, it, that refuses to let him stop smiling. This version of the Joker was born disfigured like this, and that really changes my perception of the design. It loses the idea of someone becoming the Joker through one bad day, and instead it makes a Joker who was born like this. And I don't think that's as interesting. It could still work, and there's still so much we don't know about why he looked like that. And I like that. His history is still unknown, and that's the exciting thing about the Joker. So the fact that his appearance leaves me asking these questions is a great thing. Don't get a clear look, so we can't tell how white his skin is. He definitely looks pale, but is it chalk white like we expect the Joker? Is his skin bleached or does he wear makeup? We don't know. Again, his hair looks slightly green. Is it dyed or was he born like it? We just can't tell. And so it's hard to rank him any higher up this list when we haven't had a good look at him yet. And of course, we've only seen him in the prison outfit. Seeing him in the purple suit would be interesting. I think a very smart, well-tailored suit could be an interesting contrast to his disheveled appearance. Overall, certainly an interesting design, and it leaves us with many of the right questions that we should have around the Joker's origin, but we don't get a good look at it. While potentially comic influence is not particularly comic accurate and I don't find the idea of him being born like this anywhere near as interesting as if this was a result of acid burn. When we get a clearer look this is definitely one that could move up the list especially if we see him in the purple with more obvious white skin and green hair or it could remain low if they don't embrace some of the traditional parts of the Joker because his core comic design is effective and it would be a shame to not see that reflected here. I can see them changing this design up to make it less disturbing if we get a closer look at it but for now definitely an intriguing design that is playing into the mystery of the Joker. Number five Jared Lee Leto's Joker from Zack Snyder's Justice League. Now we have the other appearance from Jared Leto's Joker and I'm counting this one as a separate look because it's very different and it's certainly an improvement. Off the bat, the tattoos are gone. It does leave the question, how did the Joker get laser tattoo removal in a post-apocalyptic future? But who cares? Obviously it's a retcon. They listened to the feedback and I'm glad they did because it looks so much better. This one actually looks like the Joker. When I talked earlier about the Joker even looking like a clown or looking creepy, this one definitely works as a creepy take on the Joker. I think this kind of smudged blood look around the mouth is an interesting take on the Joker smile and it definitely works better than the grill. All good Joker interpretations find a good blend between the actor and the character. This kind of creepy long-haired gothic look blends better with the rock star turned actor than a weird wannabe gang leader look. It's still not perfect, there is still feeling of trying too hard. I mean look at some of these photos. And like what is he wearing? Sure he's in a post-apocalyptic future but it feels like they said to Jared Leto to go and pick three things out of the prop drawer and he randomly pulled out a medical gown, a swap vest and washing up gloves. Like how hard is it to put him in the purple suit? I like to think the SWAT vest is a reference to Suicide Squad and I like to think the yellow gloves are a reference to the Joker in the 60s Batman opening cartoon or maybe the final version of Joker from Gotham but I highly doubt it. This is definitely an improvement but it's still not a version that has any impact. Number four, Joaquin Phoenix Joker in Joker and Joker 2. At number four we have Joaquin Phoenix Joker costume. His main look in both films are basically the same and so they fall under the same rank here. This is a look which very much leans into the clown side of the character. His makeup here is as much clown makeup as it is Joker makeup and it plays on that creepy look that clowns can have effectively. And because it's based off real life clowns, it allows this Joker to emote really well. And it allows the character to have this great physical transformation from the small, timid, hunched Arthur Fleck to the bold, confident, and charismatic Joker. Now, of course, that is down to the performance, but the costume definitely helps by complementing and emphasizing the performance. And that's what great costume design should do. Obviously, there's no physical deformation here like we usually get with the Joker. This is purely a mental and cosmetic transformation. And that works for this version of the character. And this simple design works effectively to lean into the Joker's transformation, which becomes this weird kind of triumphant embrace of his Joker side. Even though that's not a good thing, the film and the costume kind of plays it like that, even though we now have a whole sequel which basically undoes that. Now, I don't know why the suit is red here. Usually we get purple for the Joker, but this one is red for some reason. I can't find a reason why. Potentially it's a reference to Taxi Driver. Red suits like this aren't exactly normal, so it's not like the excuse is that the red suit is more realistic than the purple. Now, I don't mind the red. I actually think it works for this washed up comedian in this version of of Gotham but I just wonder why they didn't go with the classic purple because when you see an edit of the purple it does instantly feel 
more like the Joker. Honestly, the reason this one isn't higher up the list is because I don't think it's unique enough. It feels fairly derivative of Ledger's Joker look with the hair lamp and the normal person in makeup. So it isn't doing enough to be new and it's also not comic accurate. Definitely a look that works for the movie it's in, but it's not the Joker. Number three, Cesar Romero's Joker in the Batman 66 movie. Kicking off our top three is Cesar Romero's Joker in the 1966 Batman film, continuing on from the 60s series. And it's a pretty comic accurate adaptation of the Joker's look. It's certainly the lightest look for the character, which makes sense for the more comedic and campy tone of the 60s version. But there is still a slight creepiness that comes through from that strong comic design. A lot of the costumes from this film and show haven't aged the best. They just come across as outdated, low budget, Halloween costume looking tight and spandex feel. But the Joker costume has aged pretty well because it is just a guy in a suit with makeup. So it's a very strong comic accurate adaptation of the Joker that I think works well and it's held up to this day. Now when I've ranked costumes in the past, some people haven't liked that I've talked about actors' physiques saying that separate from their costume. But in my opinion, an actor's physique impacts how a character appears on screen and that should be taken into account when considering their costume. Ben Affleck's Batman is an absolute unit and that needs to be considered when talking about his suits. And Michael Keaton is small for Batman, but the suit is designed to give him a larger presence. So I think talking about physique is important when considering costume design and bringing the comic character's looks to life. And the Joker in the comics is tall, taller than Batman and Romero's Joker is the Joker look that gives me the feeling of the Joker comics physique. I think of the Joker being towering, thing, long gangly limbs and Romero's height and physicality captures this best out of all of the Joker actors. Now there are two things which hold this suit back. Firstly, like Phoenix's Joker, this suit is kind of the wrong color. It appears a pinkish red rather than the usual purple. I'm not sure why, maybe it's due to the coloring of the TVs at the time or maybe they just thought it looked better, but I'd have preferred the purple for a version of the Joker, which other than this is pretty comic accurate. But there is a much bigger flaw and once you see it, you can't unsee it. His mustache. That's right, before we had the Superman mustache debacle, we had mustache Joker. Basically because Cesar Romero was so known for his tash, he didn't want to shave it off for the role and it comes through the makeup and once you see it, it's super obvious and that holds it back from being any higher up this list. Number two, Heath Ledger's Joker in The Dark Knight. At number two is Ledger's iconic look for the character. Similar to Leto's, when this look was first revealed, it was pretty controversial. However, unlike Leto's, this look absolutely worked in the finished product. It takes everything that works about the comic design and applies it in a new way to this much darker and realistic world. But despite being realistic and gritty, it doesn't feel embarrassed by its comic roots. We get the white skin, the red lips, the full purple suit. This is the perfect way to interpret a comic book look. You keep the core elements that make the comic design so special, but you reinvent it to work for your adaptation. You take the idea of him permanently smiling and apply it through a different way, through a Glasgow smile, a real life disfigurement, which still ties into the idea of the Joker being deformed, even if it's not through acid. And there were a couple comic runs before this film where we did see the Joker with facial scars. The smile ties into the idea of not knowing the Joker's origins because we never find out the real reason why he has it. There's some concept art that shows the original idea has him looking slightly more deformed and I think that design works but for some reason the more subtle design they went with actually works better and again unlike Leto's Joker it shows that sometimes less is more. It has a creepy look, it has a deranged look but it also works for a Joker who is smarter and more cunning than he originally appeared. He has the full purple and green suit and they embrace his colours but it never feels out of place in the darker world and there's still a level of dirtiness and grit to his clothes that really ground it and his costume even plays into his chaotic plans filled with weapons when necessary. It can look creepy and it hints at a much darker side to the character without feeling overtly disturbing to look at. The outfit looks cool with both the coat on and off and we get a few other extra looks. The nurse outfit is iconic in its own right. And a big shout out to the mask that Joker wears in the bank sequence at the start when he reveals himself. It's actually the same style of mask that Cesar Romero's Joker wore when he was first revealed in his first appearance. So that's such a great reference. Much like any good costume, it completely transforms the actor by combining with their performance. You do not see Heath Ledger here, you see the Joker. This is the perfect interpretation of a character's look. Changing what is needed to fit your world and story, but keeping the essence, the core, and the spirit of the character. And so it still feels like the Joker and not an insult to the fans. Number one, Jack Nicholson's Joker in Batman. But coming in at number one is Jack Nicholson's Joker from Batman 89. Now this really was close between my top two because Ledger's is a really effective design, but ultimately I had to go with the one that is slightly more comic accurate. And to this day, Jack Nicholson's Joker look is still the most comic accurate so far. And part of the reason we've had so many interpretations and reimaginings of the character is because they nailed the look pretty well back in 89. So every future adaptation, rather than try to top it, instead they tried to reimagine it. Now Nicholson's Joker has multiple different costumes throughout the film. They all include the purple suit and they vary from different purple and green ties and orange and green shirts. They all feel very Joker. We kind of see an evolution of the suit, which I love from Jack Napier as this mob boss wearing a more normal looking purple suit to it becoming more and more extravagant as he descends into madness. 
madness. So all of these slightly different looks serve a story purpose and I think it culminates in what I would class as his main look for the film with the purple suit, orange shirt, green puffy tie and purple hat. It all feels very comic joker but also giving this one its own unique personality. Now as far as I can tell the orange shirt was a new look for the joker in this film but we had seen him in the comics with a mustardy orange waistcoat. So it was still a color that had been associated with the Joker. And going forwards after 89, we began to see the orange shirt appear in the comics and in other mediums. So this look has had an impact on other media. The hat here feels very killing joke, which came out a year before in the comic. And we also see a beret at some point, which feels very specific to this version of the Joker and his weird love for art. Now this is a version that fell into the chemicals, which explains his very classic pale skin, red lips and green hair appearance. They take the idea of the Joker having a permanent and smile and really embed it into the core of this character. His smile goes beyond falling into the acid here. Batman deflects a bullet which hits Jack's face. We see it looking damaged and bloody. He then falls into the acid bleaching his skin and then visits a back alley surgeon who fails to repair his face and leaves him with the permanent grin. He then sees his reflection. We hear him break down and be driven insane. So it takes different elements of the Joker's looks in the comics, the permanent smile, the bleached skin from the acid, the going insane from his reflection and ties it all into one story and one look for the character. And sure, it does lose some of the mystery behind his appearance but at least it's being influenced by the most accepted Joker transformation story from the comic. I don't think it's the perfect look for the Joker. I still don't think we've had that on screen yet. He doesn't quite have the physique I'd expect from the Joker. The long towering body, the pointed features and I don't think the permanent smile always holds up at times especially without the white makeup it can look very plasticky and forced but that's a pretty minor nitpick. Overall this is the best the Joker has looked on film. It feels comic accurate and it captures all elements of the Joker. His Richter's grin, his bleached skin, his bright eccentric suits and it creates a design that just feels like the Joker. Not a take on the Joker, not dark and gritty Joker, not prison gang leader Joker, not realistic Joker but just the Joker. So for all these reasons all of it adds together to create my favourite Joker look and Jack Nicholson's Joker from Batman 89 comes in at number one. hope you enjoyed my ranking let me know your ranking down in the comments below do you agree what's your favorite do you prefer comic accurate takes or do you prefer interpretations of the joker look if you like this i've also ranked the batman spider-man iron man and wolverine suits so be sure to check those out if you haven't already let me know any other superhero suit you want me to rank down in the comments below if you enjoyed this please give the video a like it helps my channel out so much and if you're new around here be sure to subscribe for more videos like this on dc marvel star wars or anything else amazing going on in cinema right now but for now thanks for watching cinemaze